Hey guys, Brian from Progressive Force Concepts here with a new video for you guys. This one is not a drill video. Uh, in light of a lot of recent incidents we've had that are questioning law enforcement uses of force, uh, we wanted to make a video that was designed to, uh, to take and reinforce knowledge that's already known by a lot of law enforcement officers, but also to educate folks that might have an opinion on this, but they're just ignorant to, uh, to sort of the way use of force actually works and the biology of the human body and uh, action versus reaction and a multitude of things. So uh, one of the things that we've seen is, is there is a category of people this video is not intended for. Those folks are the ones who, despite the fact when facts are presented, they still choose to hold to a falsehood or a false narrative or a false hope. So if you're one of those folks in that category, uh, this is probably not for you. Uh, but again, if you're one of those folks who does have an opinion and everybody's entitled to an opinion, this may help you make a more educated opinion. And if you do have an opinion uh, and you work in the law enforcement military realm, this may help you defend your opinion uh, in a little bit more mathematical regard. We're firm believers that the only thing that's true is math, and we use a lot of math in this video. So uh, essentially one of the things that has come into question is a suspect has a gun but the gun is at his side. Why did the officers have to shoot? I'm a fan of Bill Maher. I heard Bill Maher on TV the other night and he said officers should wait until they are in the middle of the gunfight or the confrontation to take and utilize force. Uh, not the case. Let's talk about uh, the three different scenarios that we set up in this drill. The first one, we've got an officer who is aimed at a paper target, but that is simulating he's aimed at a suspect. Directly next to him in his peripheral vision is a person playing the role of a bad guy. That was myself. And I've got a firearm at my side, hands at my side. The officer is doing what he's been trained to do. He is keeping his finger straight and off the trigger until his sights are on target and he has made the decision to shoot. So we have an officer adhering to policy and procedure. He's also at a slight break, a contact ready at the lower abdomen of the suspect until he can take and see that something has happened with the hands and he elevates the gun. Spontaneously, in every single one of these runs that we did, I mounted my gun and was able to successfully get a round off a valid shot inside of the vital zones on the target before, before the other officer was able to do. I did that on average about a quarter of a second faster. So that means with his gun up and on the lower extremities of the target, actually the lower thorax of the target, all he had to do was hinge the weapon and put his finger on the trigger. I still beat him every single time by a margin of a quarter of a second. Then we took and we said, let's tip the scales a little bit more in his favor. We allowed the officer to aim in at the target, actually aim in. And these were no regular officers. These are individuals that are on staff with us who have an extensive background in special operations, law enforcement, and most importantly, they're employees of PFC. So they're not playing with kid gloves. They're playing to win. Their reaction time is going to be significantly better than the average trained officer that's out there. So in this second run we did, aimed in on target, finger on the trigger. The only thing that the officer has to do is press the trigger straight to the rear. Again, I have a gun down and at my side. At my discretion, I took, mounted the gun, and got a shot off in the vital zone, on average, 11 hundredths of a second faster than the responding officer did. With all those advantages tipped in his favor, he still is losing. Then, we took and we added stress to the mix. We took the officer and we moved him back 50 meters, had him do 10 push-ups, run 50 meters, come up to the uh, shooting line that we had, draw his firearm out, and start giving verbal commands. What do we have now? Gun, Elevated gun, heart rate, gun, gun, we have stress, gun, down, and we also gun, have his gun, divided down, attention, gun, wherein he is giving out gun, a verbal command. Gun, we found if he was in the beginning of a sentence, meaning drop the gun, get on the ground, if we caught him at the beginning of a sentence, his reaction time suffered even more. In some cases, up to almost a whole second. So the notion that officers are taking and shooting first and asking questions later is actually wrong. And the notion that an officer comes in contact in an armed confrontation with a person, which we should never have an armed confrontation with Drop a person, but Drop if he has down. that Drop and he doesn't Drop shoot immediately, that officer is actually putting himself at greater hazard, his teammates at greater hazard, more likely of orphaning, a, uh, orphaning his kids and, and widowing a spouse, all in the name of not using force. 
So people that assert that uh, law enforcement officers are the big bad wolf and that they're racist and bad and, and that they're making terrible decisions, they're actually quite wrong. Giving anybody warnings and anybody opportunity when they are unlawfully defying your legal authority and walking around in an armed standoff holding a firearm by their side, they're putting that law enforcement officer at a disadvantage. And the math, the math, not the opinion, the math bears it out. Be safe.